Norton Summit for a stage four recon. Uh, it was pretty good. So some of the lads did intervals, some of the lads didn't do intervals. Uh, it was a bit rainy today, didn't really like it very much. I was, I was debating about whether to go out, but decided to go out, catch some footage. So you can see some, some of the guys decided, right, let's, let's go. Um, Caleb Ewan's going back to stop for a piss, I think. Uh, he's got some big calves on them, <laughs> big lad Caleb Ewan. Uh, they, they're all a nice bunch, the old uh, Michelton Scott, as they're now called. So this guy ahead of me is a pretty keen bloke and trying to, trying to hold some pros' wheels. I it was I've already done like five hundred k this week, so I need a rest. Um, so I'm just cruising up. We're pinning about two forty watts. I think it was roughly two fifty. Depends. Uh, depends on the wind. It was it was a decently windy day. So on the tailwind sections, I had to put in a bit more work, and on the on the on the non tailwind on the headwind sections, I I got a good draft. Uh, so to the left we have Paris Bay winner Matty Matthew Heyman, and to the right we have Australian national champion. Uh, Alexander Edmondson. So he was saying actually he only has two kits um, for the national championship jersey. That's why he's not wearing them today because he didn't want them getting ruined. Um, so he has two jerseys, I think. Uh, he's wearing the national champs helmet. He's wearing some shorts which have the national bands on them. He doesn't have a custom bike yet. Uh, it was actually interesting. He, I think he's running his old team bike from last year because it was the green one. And he's also got a salad, a saddle pack, not a salad bag, a saddle bag, which is actually the same as mine. He's running C twenty fours, so some training wheels, nothing, nothing too expensive. I think, yeah, it definitely was last year's bike, because um, he's a local in Adelaide, so I guess maybe he didn't bring his bike over from the nationals. I don't know, or oh, it got lost or something. No one knows. Uh, but Matthew Heyman and all the other guys, they're running C forties, uh, I think, which is different to Team Sky, but they're all running C forties, no discs. Um, the Scott Foil has like a, a brake under the rear seat stay, so that's quite good. Another thing I noticed is that they're all running GUN 1000s now, not the 1030, but the 1000s, instead of the SRM PC8, which is what they were running before, so their head unit has definitely changed, uh, which is interesting, um, because Cycling News said they hadn't. They, they said that they would um, that they were all running PC8s, the, um, the Michigan Scott boys, but I, I found that to be different. Um, I had a little look at Jack Bauer's bike, and he was definitely running a thousand, GUN 1000, uh, same with Damien House and same with the other guys. Um, so yeah, it was, it was a good ride with the guys. Um, I, I quite like just rolling up the hills with them. You just watch what they're doing. We also bumped into some of the um, Ben Long Swiss Wellness riders on the way up. Um, on the second time that we went up. So there's KB and going past. Um, and yeah, they were good guys, the Ben Long Swiss Wellness. They're here, for, they're here to ride for the Uni, Uni SA team, which is pretty much this um, national team for Australia. Uh, so that's what they, they're all continental riders and they got, pick, uh, they got picked for that. Uh, a bit of controversy with that because some people couldn't get picked because they didn't have their, they weren't on the biological passport, which is all a bit controversial because the winner of the under twenty three race didn't get picked. Chris Harper, who came third in the in the elites, didn't get picked, so that was a bit controversial. Uh, but nonetheless, I think it'll be a strong team. Um, so you can see here the riders are really comfortable riding next to each other as you'd expect from because they're all world tour riders. Uh, they'll bang in, bang into each other. They're having good chat about the nationals. That's what mainly what they're talking about. Talking about the tactics, I think maybe they hadn't only just all caught up or whatever, but just saying, sort of having a debrief of uh, what went on. Um, so you can see that it was weird. Um, Alex Edmondson is in the big ring the whole way up. Maybe it's just because he's a local Adelaide boy and he just knows that like you can get in the big ring all the way up. But I, I don't know. It was weird. He was, it definitely had a lower cadence. While Matthew Heyman. Uh, had dropped down to the small ring and was just just slightly spinning up. But for, the thing is with this is like the effort, the amount of exertion they're doing is just li like so small, just because um, they've got such a high power output at threshold. So it definitely um it definitely doesn't matter really that much. Well, for me, I, I did have to keep a good cadence, but nothing nothing too crazy. Mainly just because it was um it wasn't too hard. Uh, so it was, it was slightly some wet roads. I was a bit apprehension apprehensive, sorry, uh, about the roads, if they'd be really slippery or not, but I think, think they weren't too bad, because often in places where the roads don't really rain much, they, they retain a lot of oil and moisture and whatever, so when they do rain, uh, so you can see here the team cars coming back, so I'll just drop back so they can get some pictures or whatever, um, because they don't want me and my little vegan top uh, in the background, uh, so it's just a polite thing to do, um, just try not to get in their pictures, Try not just try to be like invisible basically, uh, so they don't know you, uh, notice you or whatever. But they were, yeah, they were uh, looking at the, what is it, the fourth stage? That goes up Norton Summit, then goes down those Tregarthen rollers, then into a Rydler. You would have seen Quickstep did this, Trek did this, 
uh, and Katusha did this. So Orica is the last team, so, uh, last team to do it. I think they're all really worried about it because there's potential for a lot of GC changes uh, or it might just be a really boring stage. I feel like what could happen is people might attack and then and then everyone else just chases and nothing really happens. Or if Richie Port and some of the climbers decide to go for it, they form a small breakaway. And because the ro roads after Norton Summit, they're quite, um, they're quite sort of twisty, so it'd be easy to get out of sight and then people would, it would be hard to sort of get the motivation to bring them back. It's not like a straight road where you can see them up and sort of measure it a little better. And also after the Tregarthen rollers, it's, um, it's pretty much downhill all the way until the last like three, 400 meters. So it's definitely a chance. The only thing is Norton Summit is not the most selective climb because it's only about 5% gradient. So if someone, even if someone who's like really light, like Richie Poor, Egan Bernal, or the other sort of smaller climbers, even if they're absolutely flying, it, it's not too hard if you're slightly heavier uh, to follow them, especially in the draft, just because it is such a um, draft assisted climb. Because they'll be going 30 k's an hour. If, when they attack, they'll be going up to 35 maybe. Uh, so that the, the draft is really strong. Uh, obviously, you have to be a strong rider, but it's not a pure climber's climb. It's not like a 7% where really power to weight is quite important. Um, even 7% for pro riders, it's not the most important thing. But when after a long period of time, 7% is. Um, like if this was 5k at 7%, then I think, yeah, it would be a different story. But because it's relatively flat, uh, and they're not doing the very first bit, the very first part of Norton Summit, which we missed today because they're not doing any race, that probably is the steepest heart, sort of gets up to 7 8%. So that would definitely be a, a time where there could be accelerations because if you strung it out, it just depends how they race it. That's the thing. I think a lot of it, what Matt White was talking to Alex Edmondson about was just trying to figure out how he thinks the race will be raced, basically. Because it's hard to always predict because you're not sure what situation everything's going to be in. Like, will the GC be tight then or will it not? Like, will there be a lot of teams w wanting to sprint? Or if, if it's only Caleb Ewan, who's like obviously going to win the sprint, then maybe teams won't want to try and bring it back. Um, so then it'll be harder for Michelton Scott. But anyway, it'll be an interesting race for sure. Uh, it's nice riding with these guys, just seeing what they think about the roads. Uh, obviously, Michelin Scott's a bit different to most other teams because they've got a lot of uh, people who live here or have trained here a lot before. Um, so Damien Howson was here as well. He's obviously a resident of Adelaide, Alex Edmondson. Uh, Jack Bow was there, a New Zealand guy. Uh, Daryl MP, um, Kay Buen, Matty Heyman. Um, who else was there? I think I'm missing one, one other guy. Um, who would it be? I don't know. Um, I need to have a think of... Oh, I can't remember who it is. Um, there was another bloke. Anyway, they were all... I think Cam Meyer's doing it, but I don't think he was training, actually. I think that was the guy we might have been missing. Uh, but, yeah, it was it was a nice ride with these guys. I I think I did another another Nortons with them, but just chill. And then and then I went home because I couldn't really bother to wait for them. They were sort of waiting around, doing maybe doing more efforts. And I was like, to be honest, it's really cold because it started raining a lot. Uh, at the end, so I was like, I just want to go home. Um, I have a qu I've had quite a big week, and I've got a race on Sunday, so I need to rest up on today and tomorrow. And then I'll be out riding with the pros tomorrow, but just again, do easy. I'm a bit worried how busy it's going to be because uh, obviously in the weekday most people work, so they're maximum make t ten people, some young kids, and then just vegans who don't have any jobs. <laughs> so we're always there. Um, but on the weekend, I mean, you you can imagine a hundred people queuing up. No, I don't know, <laughs> maybe not. Um, but I think if I pick a weird team like Bahrain Merida, no one's no one's going to want to ride with them, so it should be should be okay. I think if I tried to go ride with Sagan, might get sort of a hundred and fifty people trying to queue up to ride with Sagan, which I don't think. Well, it's not just not really. It's a bit weird. Like I don't know. I always find it's a bit odd if it's like one or two, but after a while, it's sort of like yeah, yeah, fair enough. But when there's like loads of you, it's a bit just like what are you doing? <laughs> like I don't know. Maybe maybe that's just me, and maybe I. Maybe I need to change change how I feel about it, but I just think for a lot of the pro teams it must be must be weird. But I think I don't know like FDJ. How many people are gonna follow FDJ around? Like I don't, no one's like a lot of the Australian people won't speak French. They won't be able to understand me if they start speaking in French or like UAE. Like it's definitely that's why I try to film more of the like popular teams this week, just because I know a lot of people like to see them. Uh, like the Sky, like Michigan Scott. Um, who else? Quick step. Those are the sort of bigger teams. I haven't, I haven't filmed BMC yet. Uh, I don't think I will tomorrow because I think because Richie Port and they've got a lot of a strong Australian contingent there. I think it might be too busy. But if you do want me to ride with a team who are, you don't think would be too busy, like if you want me to ride with a Stana, uh, like the full team, not just Valgren, 
then I can do that. Or if you want me to ride with yeah, UAE, Bahrain, any of them really that aren't super popular. Maybe maybe EF Education presented by Camdale, one of the old favourites. Um, maybe maybe ride with them. It just depends. I think it's supposed to rain tomorrow, so maybe that will discourage people from coming. But anyway, it's really nice because like you just get to see the guys like how they ride, especially through traffic. They're just very calm. Like they accelerate quite hard off the off the blocks, and then it's just easy. Especially when you're in the wheels, I think it's be interesting to see how much power they do on the on the front. I think it's probably just like zone two, which is like probably two eighty watts or something on the front, three hundred. Um, if they have like that, would be like seventy percent, seventy five percent of a um of four hundred watt threshold, which is what most of these guys I think have. Like obviously it depends the, for the climbers and for the slightly heavier riders, but I think more or less most pros are around that around that threshold for four hundred watts. Um. And I, I know some of them definitely, like Jack Bauer, probably do, is bigger because he's he's a really strong time trialist than maybe uh, Caleb Ian, who's a bit smaller, probably has a slightly less big threshold, but then a lot better anaerobic numbers. But I was surprised by Caleb Ian. He was, he's really small. He's about my height, but seems a lot smaller, I think. But his calves are huge, like, like just monstrously big. I mean, you sort of half saw them, but not really, like, before. Um... But yeah, they're, they're, they're big weapons. Uh, that's one thing with the sprinters. You can definitely tell when riders are sort of sprinters because they do generally just have actually bigger legs. Like obviously these guys ahead are pretty big legs um, compared to like pure climbers or whatever, or like Chris Froome or someone like that. Um, but they're not they're not that big. And the other thing you always have to remember with the GoPro footage is that it sort of it has like a fisheye effect almost. Like a, I think it's quite a small one, but it does definitely have a fisheye effect so that it means their legs... They just look bigger. Because uh, if you look at their arms, their arms are like pretty small. That's me trying to get some better better GoPro footage. Um, make sure it's okay. Sorry about that. I probably should have edited that out. But anyway, um, that's what I do for you. <laughs> I'm trying to hold a pro rider's wheel and clean my GoPro. Um, yeah, that looks a lot better now. There's one thing Harley was going on about me a lot, telling me to get my lens clear, which I think you can even even tell just doing that then. It helps so much. It just makes it look so much brighter and so much, so much clearer. So you can get good views of the pro riders. Uh, they're all running Shimano's, Shimano cleats. I think Alex Evanson had red, uh, which means like no float. And I think Matty Heyman had blue, which was two and a half degrees. Uh, that's one thing I've been surprised about. A lot of people always write about having a lot of amateurs, especially so always say you need to have the uh, zero fleet, zero degree uh, float cleat, but I. Uh, Obviously, I I slightly disagree with that, and a lot of bike fitters like JT the bike fit on um, Francis K channel says don't do that because it increases the tension in your knees. And I think a lot of pro riders, even the one, even the big sprinters, they do run a uh, like cleats with with float, especially like the speed play for instance. Um, they obviously have like twenty degrees of float, so that's that's pretty big. Um, but yeah, it is interesting to see. They were running SRM power meters uh, last year. They're not running the new Shimano ones, which is weird because I'm pretty sure they're a Shimano, Shimano sponsored team, uh, which is rather odd. Um, I think they're imitating someone. I'm not sure who it was. I couldn't really over overhear them, but they were sort of like pretending pretending to imitate someone. But yeah, don't know who it was. It might have been some random amateur. It might have been me. <laughs> no one knows. Uh, but no, they were, they were a safe, safe bunch, these guys. Uh, really nice. Um, which is which is good fun. It's just good fun riding with different people, riding with like the pros, seeing like seeing just how they train. Like a lot of it is just getting the miles in, doing a lot of aerobic base training, and then when they do intervals, they hit intervals hard. Like they don't mess around. Um, I think Michigan and Scott are definitely a lot keener on the intervals than everyone else, just because it's their race and they need to sort of impress. Other teams definitely. I think having talked to some other guys who've ridden with the with some of the teams, they they just. It's not that like they don't care, but they just realise that this isn't like a, a priority race for them. I mean, it's not their big race, so they, they don't mind coming in a little bit unfit and sort of just seeing how it goes. Uh, but there's normally one or two riders who think they can do well, because there's world tour points on, on offer, so no one's, no one's like unfit, but for a pro rider, they're unfit. Um, or they just haven't done the high high intensity training because if they're trying to peak for the Tour de France or whatever races they're trying to peak for, they just want to have a lot of endurance now and not do too much. Um, they don't want to do too much intensity so that they'll they'll leave the intensity out of training and then when in the races it'll be good good to wake themselves up. Um, I'll be interested to talk to some of the riders see if they how hard it is. I feel like it depends on stage to stage, but 
I feel like it probably it's obviously not as hard as some of the races in the mid-season when everyone's on peak form and really up for it. Uh, so you can see we're coming to the end of Norton Summit. These guys don't do Norton Summit that fast um, when they're just chilling. Um, most amateurs, I think, could keep up with this pace. It's pretty chill. We're sitting on about four watts per kilo, which I feel like 20 men's is pretty pretty easy to do, to be honest. Um, and even if you even if you ate two kilos, you wouldn't probably need, wouldn't need to do four. You probably need to, wouldn't need to do four watts per kilo. Probably a little less, like three hundred, just because uh, most a lot of this climb is sort of draft draft assisted, uh, which is always nice. Uh, so you can see the roads are decently wet, but not too bad. Um, so there are some other guys who have done their intervals and they're just heading down um, to do a couple more. Uh, these guys just I don't know they're obviously feeling a bit tired and didn't want to really want to do any intervals, uh, so they were just cruising up, up and down Norton Summit to uh, get some get some K's in the legs and whatever, just just warm up. I think everyone has different priorities or whatever. Some people like to do intervals. They just do what they want to be honest. Um, whatever helps them the most in in order to get in race shape. Uh, the team often sometimes the team will have plans and say like this is what we're gonna do. Uh, Sky definitely had that. But I think other teams are a lot more relaxed and they're like, yeah, do whatever you want. They might say, like, we're doing a lead-out train. Um, but they're not like, right, we're doing five five-minute intervals at 115% of threshold. I mean, like, they don't do that at this moment in time because every rider has different, like, fitnesses compared to what they've done on the off-season and they also have different goals. Um, I think most of it's just getting in the Ks. And just acclimatised to Adelaide, getting getting a good block of training before the tour down under, and some of them stay afterwards to get another couple of weeks. Uh, I know, I think Chris Lawless might, and that the Team Sky Boys might stay here, or they'll be going to Melbourne to do the um, Great Ocean Ra Road Race. Uh, so I think we've just come to the end of the video here. The team car is parked up on the left. It was weird, they didn't have like a normal team car, they didn't have like a their own team car, and they didn't have the race organisers team car, they seemed to have like rent some random red car which is a bit weird, but Matt White was there, um, spoke to him a bit, um, and yeah, they were nice, they were spotting out a lot of koalas or whatever uh, for the guys, which was good, uh, and there was also, I think, some journalists there who was getting some interviews from some of the riders, but yeah, overall, it was really nice, good good bunch of guys, pretty chilled out, I think they'll do really well in Tour Down Under, because they definitely seem a lot more focused than some teams, and uh, they definitely do seem uh, concentrated on this race, Matthew Hayman's just going for a piss there. Um, they'd only been riding for probably half an hour, 40 minutes, but that's what they do. Um, so we're just coming to the end of the vid, <laughs> taking some pictures so I got out of the way. Uh, cheers for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.